The topic that I have selected today are two, Ramadan and fasting. And a lot of time we consider both Ramadan and fasting the same, but they are different. There are different dimensions of the month of Ramadan and the fasting, which is one of the pillar of Islam, which is very important part of Ramadan. But Ramadan is not just about fasting. So inshallah, I'm going to open this subject today in next few minutes. My brothers and my sisters, Ramadan is a month of transformation. Ramadan is a month which actually changed the whole landscape of the world. If you remember the Islamic history, after Prophet Muhammad started his journey in Makkah, for 13 years in Makkah, he was trying to invite Jews and Christians to join the folds of Islam. And at every step, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was providing them the opportunity, Jews especially, the Bani Israel, to come and accept the invitation of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Up until second year of Hijrah in Medina, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allowed Muslims to pray towards Baitul Muqaddas. Because Allah wanted to do this itmam e hujjah that if there is any hope in Bani Israel, they can join Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Imagine when Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam is going for miraj, Allah subhanahu wa taala did not take him directly to miraj; He took him to Baitul Muqaddas, Jerusalem. Because Allah wanted to keep still Bani Israel in the loop, hoping that they will join Prophet Muhammad. When every effort failed to let Jews, Bani Israel, join the folds of Prophet Muhammad, finally, in the second year of Hijrah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala decided that now. We used to fast like Jews fast. We used to pray the direction where Jews pray. But now we are going to give Muslims a different identity, a different Kaaba, a different way of worshipping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So there is no more only three days of fasting. Rather, now Muslims will fast different fasting than Jews and Christians. And Muslims will fast for 30 days. And their Qibla is also changed around that time that now Muslims will not pray towards Jerusalem anymore. They will have their own Qibla. So this month of Ramadan actually is a month of independence for Muslims. Independence. That now Muslims have their own identity, their own way of doing fasting, their own way of worshipping towards Kaaba, not towards Baitul Muqaddas anymore. So my brothers and my sisters, when the ayahs which I read from Surah Yunus and Surah Bakra in front of you, in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying that this month of Ramadan is important, because of one reason that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down his message Al-Quran in this month. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, Qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmati fa bi zalika fal yafrahu. Rejoice, enjoy, celebrate. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down on through Prophet Muhammad sallallahu the last message of on this planet which is Quran and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Huwa khairun mimma yajma'oon this Quran what it teaches is better than whatever you collect in this dunya so be happy about it enjoy and celebrate the month of Ramadan because of Quran 
and Surah Baqarah, and then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Shahr Ramadan lazi unzila fihi al-Qur'an. That this is the month that we have sent down this Qur'an for you. Qur'an is a book to inspire us. Qur'an is actually a power to give us energy to act according to Islam. You know, I always give an analogy. If you have built a beautiful house and that beautiful house has, you know, all the lights and bulbs and all the fixtures, chandelier, all the beautiful fixtures are there. But when night time comes, if there is no power, if there is no electricity, if there is no current, that that whole house will go in dark. Same way, my brothers and my sisters, in our life, in the month of Ramadan, our fasting, our taraweeh, our salah, our charity, if there is no Quran, it's like we have no power and all this is not going to benefit us like it should. So this month of Ramadan actually is to redevelop our connection with Quran. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us of taqwa, what is taqwa? Taqwa is that we avoid any kind of disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is we protect ourselves from the disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is that we protect ourselves from the hellfire. Taqwa is that we protect ourselves from the anger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is that in every second of my life, I feel the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is that I do my best to fulfill all the demands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know, there are two Umars in our history. One is Umar bin Khattab, Razi Allah ta'ala anhu, and one is Umar bin Abdul Aziz, Razi Allah ta'ala anhu. And both of them have given definition of taqwa. When Hazrat Umar asked about taqwa, and the Sahabi asked him, have you walked on a track on both sides you have thorns, kante. And how you walk on that track, on that path where you, have, you are surrounded with all these thorns. Hazrat Umar said that I will make sure that my clothes are safe and I can pass without touching any thorn. So I can avoid any accident. Hazrat Huzaifa says that that is what taqwa is. That you walk in this life, that you want to avoid all the thorns. Thorns are disobedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Getting indulged in anything which is forbidden by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Hazrat Umar bin Abdul Aziz, Razi Allah ta'ala, I know he defines taqwa in a different way. He says taqwa is that you avoid all kind of things which are forbidden for you. Any disobedience to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you avoid that. Everything else you do in your life is ihsan. Is ihsan. My brothers and my sisters, you know Ramadan in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trains us in such a way, even 12 year old child, when he is fasting, every second of his fast, he is very cautious and careful. That no, nothing goes beyond his throat. Every second when you are cautious and conscious about the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa that is the meeting point with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That you are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that's why you are so conscious and careful. In Ramadan, the most desirable thing for us in life is intimacy. And people avoid that 
because there is no permission from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala while we are fasting. The most important needs of our life, you know, our thirst and hunger, food and water, we avoid that because I am waiting order from Rai Rabbul Alami to give me permission to use that. For our basic needs, we withhold ourselves. That we, we are waiting signal from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When the signal will come, permission will come, then I will do even things which are halal, which are permissible in normal circumstances. But I will do only if it is allowed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So during Ramadan, fact of the matter is that every second of fasting you are meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. You are seeing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because in your mind and heart Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is there to remind you the time that you are not supposed to do what you are not supposed to do. My brothers and my sisters, you know whenever we focus Ramadan, focus Ramadan just not for one month. Wallahi Ramadan is for the preparation for 11 months. You know, whenever you have task which is difficult in front of you, we go through a difficult drill, exercise, training. And the training and drill and exercise depends upon the difficulty of the task, that how difficult it should be. After we go through such an extensive drill and training of Ramadan, the point is that after Ramadan, the life should look very easy for you. After Ramadan, Allah is not asking you and me to fast. Allah is not asking you and me to stand for Qiyamul Layl at night in Masjid. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is only asking you and me just to pray five times. Avoid things which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forbidden for you. And you remember from last year and every year after we pass Ramadan that after Ramadan Salah looks very light. When you come for Isha Salah it looks like I am missing something. The reason is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to acknowledge and appreciate after we go through this difficult drill that life after this should be easy for you. Obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala should be easy for you. My brothers and my sisters, so in Ramadan, our task should be that my focus is not just Ramadan. My focus is life of 11 months after Ramadan. Then we will be able to benefit from Ramadan better than before my brothers and my sisters. In Hadith, Prophet says, Shaitan is get changed in the month of Ramadan. There is another aspect, dimension of the Tarbiyah. The biggest Shaitan, the biggest Shaitan you and me face is the Shaitan which is sitting in ourself. In ourself. And that is the Shaitan which creates temptations, invites us to do sin, whispers, that is the difficult shaitan that we need to control. Most of the time, we may be able to stop the outside shaitan, but the shaitan sitting inside of us is the most difficult one to control. Our desires, our temptations coming from inside. And in Ramadan, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes us to go through that training that we can control this shaitan of our nafs which creates all these temptations and desires for us so we can control it even better after Ramadan. Fasting is a station of mind, spirit and heart when connection with Quran becomes easy. You know, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu if you go through the history, before the first revelation, he was going in cave of Hira. And he is doing contemplation there. 
he was sitting there and doing fasting because fasting creates the environment of such a sincerity such closeness to allah subhanahu wa taala that our heart and spirit and mind gets so close to allah subhanahu wa taala that when we hear quran or when we reach out to quran that quran opens up its doors doors for us so we can understand it better i want to share with you some practical things that we can do in the month of ramadan the first thing i will say remove the bad habits we have time wasters habits usually have time slot and do in ramadan every second of our life is important every second of ramadan is important the first step i say if you have habit which really waste lot of your time try to take care of those habits from the very first day of ramadan so remove the bad habits during the month of ramadan the second thing i will say make list of your duas make list of your duas sayyid qutb rahmatullah alayhi has written in one of his book the sahih hadith of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam that allah accepts one dua during the day time and one dua at night time for every fasting person minimum one dua so we should be ready to make one special dua when we are breaking our fast and we should be able to make very special dua when we are beginning our fast so make list of all of your duas and let me tell you one thing here about dua dua reflects about the understanding of your deen wallahi most of us nothing wrong in that nothing wrong in that but most of us our relationship with allah subhanahu wa taala is transactional that if i will do this i expect this from allah subhanahu wa taala and most of our duas are related to our dunya and nothing wrong in that but the best thing you can ask allah subhanahu wa taala is the khair of that life the success of the life of hereafter the success that allah will be pleased with you when you leave this dunya asking allah subhanahu wa taala that ya rabbul alamin when i leave this dunya i leave this dunya with legacy that people will remember me with good name waj'al li lisana sidqin fil akhirin when i depart from this dunya people will remember me with good name so make list of your duas number 3 my brothers have some time of reflection sit down alone while you are in a masjid or at your home if you are going for a walk have some time of reflection that you can have some manajat you can talk to allah subhanahu wa taala you can present your case in front of allah subhanahu wa taala month of ramadan is the best month to have manajat talk with allah subhanahu wa taala so have some time of seclusion some time when nobody is bothering you there is nobody between you and allah subhanahu wa taala try to have those time slots during the month of ramadan that when you can sit down and do some reflection the last thing which i will say to you my brothers and my sisters about the preparation and what you can do during the month of ramadan make this ramadan special for quran wallahi most of us our mindset is that we want to finish 10 qurans we want to do only nazra but this quran has come for a purpose as imam ibn taymiya rahmatullah alay says that one hour of reflection one hour of reflection is better than 1000 years ibadah 1000 years ibadah so if you sit down and read quran and ponder about quran reflection when you are reading surah baqarah any surah i can tell you whatever i have understood about this deen al islam 
Wallahi, if you finish 10 Quran, 10 Quran by Nazra in the month of Ramadan, as compared to you just finished Surah Baqarah, with meaning and reflection, what understanding I have this, of this deen, your reward with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will be better by finishing just Surah Baqarah with meaning and reflection than finishing 10 Quran with Nazra. Our problem is, my brothers and my sisters, I am 62 years old, but I am the same Shahid Rafiq who was 20 years back. Nothing is changing in me. I am the same. I have gone through so many drills of fasting every year, but nothing changes in me. I am the same Shahid Rafiq. I am the same person. I have the same lifestyle. I have same priorities of my life. I live my life like any other American lives. The reason is that we have lost the spirit of the ibadah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We have not understood the meaning of fasting. We have not understood the meaning of having relationship with this book, Al-Quran. And that will not happen just by reading Quran without understanding the Quran. So my message for myself and you is that have a mental picture that after Ramadan, inshallah, I want to see myself a better Muslim and that can happen if I have a better relationship with Quran. Wallahi, make this month the month of Quran for yourself. Fasting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has prescribed us so we can have better connection with Quran. Don't focus just on finishing Quran. Don't focus on just finishing Quran. Focus on understanding what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking to you and me. For Sahaba, Wallahi, for us, we need big lectures, we need YouTube lectures, we need seminars, we need conferences. For Sahaba, when they were standing in Salah, there was a lecture by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for them in the shape of Quran. When Imam is reciting Quran, this was a lecture for them, this was a seminar for them. A speech of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was giving them the inspiration. My brothers and my sisters, I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that He gives you me this tawfiq that we can get best out of this Quran and best out of this month of Ramadan. And in the last, I will tell you one thing. This is my journey towards Jannah. Don't look right and left. People get caught in this Oh, you know, Tarawi is not first. This is just a Sunnah. Okay, I will pray five, I will pray ten, I will pray eight. Brothers, this is your journey to Jannah. Do we ask in this dunya, I will just make ten thousand dollars. I don't need twenty thousand dollars. I am okay with five thousand dollars. Do we ask ourselves this question in this dunya? No. When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling you and me, my brothers and my sisters, that collect whatever you can collect in this dunya for akhirah, because khairum mimma yajma'un, that whatever you will collect for that dunya is better than whatever you can collect in this dunya. So make such a plan for yourself that you want to make sure that you want to exhaust yourself to get benefit from the every second of Ramadan. So do whatever you can do, whatever best you can do. If you can pray 8 rakah of Tarawi, you can pray 20 rakah of Tarawi, my brothers and my sisters, you can finish as many Quran as possible with meaning and reflection. Make your time more fruitful for you so at the end of the Ramadan when you will look back you will say thanks to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that I was able to make this Ramadan a different Ramadan for me. Allah.